Uh, how honest do you want me to be about that? Are oh, you talking about going back to um, Warner Brothers for a structure kind of thing? Is that what you mean, honesty, or is that where you, or what, what were you thinking? No, I mean why we decided to do why I wanted to do this as opposed to recording Nashville. in Nashville. I think you can be honest, but I think you I think you can put <clears throat> a political twist on it where it doesn't it's not slam in Nashville. You know, you focus on art. I think you should. I think you bring it up that way. I mean, there's nothing. It's, it's a, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, the reason Marshall and I decided to come to El Paso was because I felt like initially that Nashville, they, they rush through recording, you know, and they don't take time like I feel like they did in the old days. They'd go through and they'd listen and they'd, try it again and, and record hundreds of takes and, and it just seemed like you were always in a hurry in Nashville. But I never, I never liked that and, and I always saw documentaries of bands I love like the Rolling Stones and these old rock and roll bands would go rent studios for months at a time and camp out, write songs and they wouldn't even go in with songs and, and uh, I always wanted to do that, that looked so cool to me. We wanted a group of people to come together with a common purpose in mind, to overcome some things, to meet some challenges, to sort of find the sense of community and single-mindedness to act as one being, almost. That moment when a band comes together and everybody transcends their talent level. Everybody transcends what they think is possible in terms of their own personal limitations as musicians, as people, as singers, as producers, as engineers. That's what led us to El Paso, Texas. Nashville to El Paso is, is too far to go in one shot. So you have to stop anyways and rest. So we thought, well, let's have a couple of rehearsals, get to know each other before we get to El Paso. They'll learn the songs, we'll chart them up, we'll talk, we'll hang, we'll bond. Uh, and we have rehearsal days built in anyway, so somebody threw out the idea of Muscle Shoals. We pull up to this little house, this little building on Jackson Highway in uh, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and it's Muscle Shoals Sound, which is probably one of the holiest places in the musical universe, as far as I'm concerned and as far as Frankie's concerned. And every one of these players, this place had factored into so much of their lives. These guys are getting off and everybody's like a kid again. They look like that on their face, walking into Muscle Shoals Sound. Frankie picks up a guitar and starts to play. And the band starts to listen. And you can feel everybody kind of lean forward a little bit. Like this is it, you know, like this is it, here we go. And over the course of an hour, you feel the spirit of this room start to creep in everybody and there's this confidence and swagger and hunger. Like they're starting to hear some things. They're starting to reach for some things and get them and Frankie's doing the same thing, and, and, and all of a sudden we're in muscle, shoal, sound, making music. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it, that's the arrangement. Yeah, that's great. Something magical happens when you create a band, a, a band of whatever it is, and it's decided that this is it, and it's these five guys that are gonna make this music, and that's it, that's it, we're not gonna go back and have anybody over, this is it. And we're making the decision, it's these guys. And we go out and we're traveling and we're loading the trailer and we're slugging it like a bunch of just savage, young, hungry dudes wanting, wanting to be in a band. We left Muscle Shoals feeling great. I know I did because the day went so smooth and the arrangements, the songs, were really coming together. So we wake up the next morning and we're in Dallas, Texas, driving around trying to find the entrance to this beautiful old theater called the Granada Theater. We step foot on the stage and it's this gorgeous old room from the early 1900s. The drummer hits the snare and it just is this perfect sound, you know, and we're standing, sitting there on the stage in a huge empty theater and then we have six more songs to get through. Frankie picks up the guitar, starts playing through the first song. We start making a chart, and the whole thing starts all over again. And it's this moment of 
now the fibers that knit us together are all coming together again. And all I can think to myself is, all right, man, there's work to be done. Let's get through today. We got to get to El Paso. So we left and it was, uh, it was exciting. We were ready. We couldn't believe the music had come this far, this fast, and felt so good rolling into El Paso. And uh, the, my vision for this album, it was just to do some, some music the way I always wanted to do it. A couple guitars, bass, drums, keys of all kinds, piano, or, you know, just keys. I've, I've just wanted to make a record like that. That's why we ended up in El Paso. That's why we've gone through this journey. That's why it's been hard. That's why we've worked to make it a little harder than it, well, man, a lot harder than it would be had we just stayed in Nashville. Um, but the rewards are evident. The rewards are these players digging in the way they are. Frankie having the, having the space and the headspace to dig in in this amazing studio here at Sonic Ranch in El Paso where nobody can find us. Nobody can find us. We don't have to be home. If we want to work at 3 in the morning, we're working at 3 in the morning. You know, but we're gonna make great music. When we step foot on the floor of the studio, we're not worried about what time we have to be home, because we're home. 